Have you ever been so wrapped up doing something that you completely missed a notification about your meeting starting? What if your smart home could help you never miss the start of a meeting again? Today, I'm going to show you how to set up notifications using Home Assistant WLED while in the office and audio notifications around the house when you're away from your desk. Your meeting is about to start. So when I'm coding, a lot of the time I have my headphones on. So audio alerts didn't seem like a good idea for me. I needed something a little bit more visual. And this is where WLED comes in. I already had an RGB bulb on my desk that I use for more passive indicators, like nudging me to stand up if I've been sitting for too long. But I wanted to expand the range of visual indicators I could get while at my desk. I liked the versatility of WLED and its seamless integration to the home system. If you aren't familiar with WLED, here's a few examples of some of the animations that you can get out of the box using individually addressable LEDs. Let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like a more complete video of all of the animations that WLED has. One of the things that you need to do to get this working is to add the Home Assistant Google Calendar integration. This is really easy and very well documented on their website. So all you have to do is follow through. If you have credentials already set up, then these sections, and if you don't, it'll explain how you set up all the credentials here. Once you've got WLED up and running, it's really easy to integrate it into Home Assistant. All you have to do is create a new automation. I then pulled in the Google Calendar plugin um, and I have a simple trigger set up when the event starts. Um, it will invoke the automation. Uh, you, can, you can change this if you want, so you could set it to one minute before the event starts. I like to have it exactly zero minutes, um, so as the event starts, it notifies me. And then I've just got this conditional action here. If you've never created one of these, it's super easy to create. Uh, you just pull in if this, then that effectively. So you can say if this condition is true, then execute this action. So I'm doing that and I'm checking actually my office desk lamp. Um, there's a lot of reasons for this. It's not a perfect solution. What I'd like to do is upgrade to a present sensor so it can infer if I'm actually in my office. Uh, rather than have to rely on something like a motion sensor or a particular state of the office, which I'm inferring here from the lamp being on. So anyway, if the lamp is on, then I just call this WLED service. Uh, it's really sim sim it's simply just the light dot turn on service. Um, and then it will call these two WLED entities. Um, the effect that's loading is this Tetrix effect. That is the same effect as if you were to search on WLED for the effect mode that you want to start here. Um, it has to be case sensitive, otherwise it won't work. The other part of the condition is if the desk lamp isn't on, then it infers that I'm not in the office. So it will use the Home Assistant Cloud Text to Speak plugin to announce to everywhere, which is a group of Google Homes that I have uh, that meeting's about to start. I'll quickly run through the items that I purchased to make all of this work, why I chose the specific things that I chose, and how I mounted it on my wall. Choosing which LED strip to get is obviously really important. There's different types of LED strips that you can get and they serve different purposes. So you can probably see behind me on the unit, there's an LED strip. Um, that's only 30 LEDs per meter, which is this first option here. Um, that's fine because the LED strip is bouncing 
the light off of the wall to be able to see it rather than looking directly at the LED strip. If you were to look directly at the LED strip, you'd be able to really cle clearly see that there's blocks of light and nothing between. So it looked very patchy. Um, going up to 60 LEDs, again, you'll be able to kind of see the LEDs uh, if you're looking directly at it. Not so much of a problem if it's bouncing off of a surface. Um, 144 LEDs, if you put that into a diffuser channel, um, which should spread out the light, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to see the individual LEDs through the diffuser channel. Um, but I wanted to go specifically for something that was very clean. So I ended up uh, going for something called an FCOB strip, which is one continuous block of light. It's the equivalent of 720 LEDs per meter. Um, and it's controlled in blocks here. So this block would be controlled. You'd be able to set it to a specific color. Um, and then this next block would be controlled and be able to set to a specific color. Um, one of the things that the particular LED strip that I got doesn't do is it doesn't have something that will specifically do white. Um, so it will only do red, green, and blue. If you want something that does specifically white, so warm whites or cool whites or neutral whites, um, you have to get a, an RGBW strip. Um, so for example, you can see this one, it, it has a dedicated chip for the white colors as well as the RGB colors. So you can actually choose whether you want cool white, warm white or neutral white. The controller that I got was nothing special. It's just a WLED controller from Galera Opto. Um, it's an ESP32 that comes pre-flashed with WLED. Uh, one of the things I like particularly about this board is you can just feed the wires directly into it um, and you can set the GPIO port and WLED to whichever one you plug it into. Uh, that means there's no soldering required, which I quite liked. Um, because I would be looking directly at the LED strips, um, I wanted to make sure that I put them in a diffuser channel to make sure they looked pretty rather than being able to see the LED strip. Um, these are the particular ones that I ordered. Again, there's nothing particularly special about them, especially where I'm using the FCOB. Um, we're not going to have to worry about the LEDs. I didn't need to worry too much about the diffuser channels that I was getting. The only consideration I had to make was that they were wide enough to fit the LED strip in. Mounting the diffuser channels is pretty straightforward. You just need to put in a few screws, line up the LED strip, and then pop the plastic cover over the top. That's it for this video. I've got well over 100 automations and I plan on making a lot more content. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. I'll leave some links in the description to everything that I used in this video, and I'll leave a list of all of my automations as well.